Hi, I'm Scott. Welcome back to Sin Stuff. Today, we're going to be looking at the minuscule little Quark NTS-1 and some free editors that are online for you. Coming up. It's been a little while since you saw me. I think it's probably been about a month since my last video. Sorry about that. If you have been following my other channel, my Canard Boulevard channel, you will know that I've been prepping and going to Oshkosh, where I camped next to my airplane for 10 days. If you want to see that, I'll put a link to that channel up there. Otherwise, we're back to synthesizers here, and today we're going to be talking about the minuscule little Korg NTS-1. This is a tiny little synthesizer that Korg released a few years ago, and it is an extremely capable mono synth. It has full effects, a lot of different oscillators. You can actually load different oscillators into it. It has a subset of the Korg Minilog engine built into it. It sounds... really good. So it is a very capable mono synth and it can make some amazing sounds. However, it is hampered with this miserable user interface that is just a bunch of buttons and knobs that do different things depending on what mode you are in. And plus you are limited to this horrible seven segment display that displays kind of letters and numbers sort of and you have to try to guess what mode you're in and it doesn't really make much sense and it's kind of hard to read and use. As a result I end up not using this a whole lot because it's just a nightmare to try to figure out how to get decent sounds out of it because the user interface is miserable. It does have an arpeggiator in it and it has this tiny little keyboard. It does also have a tiny little speaker. So if you don't have a, a headphones or anything else plugged into it, you can plug, you can actually hear what you're doing on this tinny little speaker. But it does have a multi-mode filter, envelope generator, mod, delay, reverb, and it has a lot of different types of each of those that you can modify. There are some paid apps that you can buy that connect this over MIDI and you can install those on your iPad or on your PC or DAW PC and it allows you to edit the sounds in a GUI on your computer so you can actually get a sense of what the synthesizer is doing and how you're creating those sounds. Plus you can also store and retrieve patches, which this thing has no patch storage natively, but you can do it on the computer. However, those are applications you have to buy and install and there are better options. And what are those options? Free web apps. In fact, I found four of them, four different applications that are running on websites. So you don't have to install anything. All you need is a web browser and then connect to this thing over MIDI, which I've done here, obviously. And we're gonna have a look at each of those four and tell you what I think about each of them and see what each one of those can do and what are the pros and cons of each of them. And of course, they are free. So if you have an NTS-1 already, it will work with what you have, no cost, and it will give you right out of the box more capability than you have with the existing NTS-1. So let's have a look at the first one. Now this is the first one. This one is nts.linclip.com and I will put a link to all of these in the description below. This one is kind of a, a, a sequencer and editor and a librarian in one. You can go into settings here and you can change, if you create a pattern in the sequencer, you can export it or you can import them. Same with the, the you can export and import patches. Uh, we do have a 16 step sequencer here that if I play it, oh, I have to select the MIDI out. I've got it hooked up to my system eight MIDI. So I'll do that and hit play. Okay, we don't have anything in the sequencer. We do have a couple tones I set up here. So here's my tone one. I can click on that. And as soon as I do, if I play something on it, you can hear it's making that sound on tone two. It instantly loads that tone to the NTS-1. If I want to say init, now it's gone back to a standard standard sawtooth sound and we can now start editing that so if we change the oscillator type if i uh, in fact you know what before we do that let's put something into the sequencer so i'm going to put uh let's see which notes are we going to have it play we're going to have a bunch play a bunch of these notes and we'll hit play A, a triangle, square, uh, user, waveform, 
There's an interesting one. And you can change the shape, which doesn't do much on this one, but if we do a square, you can hear it. Alt, whatever that does. Uh, we have, if we have an LFO, we can create, add that to the oscillator as well. Here's our filter type. We have a cutoff and a resonance. So now that we've made that sound, we can save it in tone three, and now I can go back to my other sounds. If I play this one, or I can go to tone one, or I can go to tone three. And then if I want to save that pattern, we can save it in user two. So we have these little presets, and if I reload the web page, it stores those, so I think they're being stored in local cookies on my machine. But uh, so you can have up to 12 tones and 12 patterns that it saves. And if you wanted to, you can then export those to files on your local computer. You can see I have a send clock turned on, so that means it's going to send the this clock here to the NTS one. So I can have the delay time sync to that. I can change that as well here if I wanted to, and that also changes the speed of the sequence being played. So if I play this sequence, oops, I have to select a MIDI out again. And play. Speed up. And slow it down. We can see uh, in when we are editing these values of the sequencer, it does tell us what note we're editing in the top here, right next to the BPM. So that's helpful. Some things that are not so helpful, oscillator type, you have to really look at the thing. It doesn't tell you what it is. Uh, this is obviously Sawtooth at the beginning. If I play it again. Then we get triangle, square, whatever that is. So we have all these different waveforms, but we don't know. We just have a number here, and that is kind of a limitation of this unit. But I really do like how this works and it's very simple and it does include the sequencer which I don't think any of the other ones do. So I'm going to disable this one because I can't have two pages selecting the same MIDI port at the same time. They won't control it. Let's move on to the next one. This is NTS Web Oscar, Oscar Me. Unfortunately, uh, this one looks really cool. It, all the uh, types, you can see it actually knows the different um, types of, of uh, oscillator, unlike the first one. You can adjust the shape, and we have memory banks in here and so on. We can, And it knows the different types of uh, filter that we have. If you looked at the previous one, we don't know the type of filter. It just it adjusts it, but it's we don't know what we're adjusting to. This one, it actually tells you, hey, this is the low pass, or this is the band pass, or whatever. That's really great, and, and the user interface is pretty decent. What's not decent is that it absolutely will not connect to my NTS-1. It just doesn't allow you to select anything in here, so that it makes it pretty useless because I can't actually make it connect to the NTS-1. So maybe you can get this to work. Maybe it's because I don't have my NTS-1 plugged in via USB MIDI, uh, that's because the NTS-1, when I plug it in my computer, tends to make my, well, it's rather the, the crappy Korg drivers tends to make my computer blue screen. So I don't plug in the NTS-1 into my computer. This editor obviously needs to have the ability to edit or, or transfer data to any MIDI port, not just a USB MIDI port, which I think is what's going on. All right, we'll move on to the next one. This one is interesting because it is open source. There is actually a GitHub repository that you can see here, and you can actually download this and edit it and do whatever you want, run it on your own web server. And here it is. This is the new tech NTOS one web controller. We're gonna to go to settings and we are gonna say output device is system eight. 
and we're going to channel one so we can go back to knobs this one does have keyboard and it defaults to hold and the hold doesn't seem to have any effect it just stays on no matter what so that's a bit of a bug but hey if you're a programmer you can download the github repository and fix it yourself the knobs allows us to go in and do this exact same thing we can change and like the other one we can say hey we we want to adjust the oscillator. It shows us what that oscillator is. We can go back to sawtooth and change the shape. Or let's say a VPN. And we go back to keyboard. Same thing for the filter. We can change what kind of filter we want. Resonance. Although the resonance doesn't seem to be working either. How about sweep depth? If we uh, change, play some keys. Yeah, that doesn't seem to work either. We have an arpeggiator. We could say uh, if we turn the arpeggiator on, and nothing happens. In fact, while I have this active, the keyboard on the NTS1 doesn't seem to work at all. It just seems to be disabled. So this one obviously needs some work. It's a good effort, but hey, it's free and you can edit the source code yourself and change it to whatever you want if you want to fix it. The last one is this MIDI Guru one. And we're going to select again System 8 because that's what I have the NTS plugged into. And it's got a lot of stuff on here. And you can show the instructions, maybe. There are the instructions and... It tells you uh, some plans for it. So we can say we're going to use channel one. And we want MIDI output patches. We can load a patch, create a patch. Let's see here. We have a so oscillator. So if I play. So we can change the oscillator type. And you can see it's the MIDI messages that it's actually sending. That's kind of cool. No keyboard on this one, I don't think. Nope. Could enable the arpeggiator. That's pretty cool sounding. It's not even a, a preset, that's just something I just made quickly by joggling a couple knobs. Interesting that you can actually see the MIDI data that it is sending as you're creating this stuff. Uh, I, I actually like that it shows all these different filters as buttons here and you, you have all the different, different sliders. Same thing for the oscillator, uh, the modulation. We can put a chorus on there, that would be good. Get rid of the arpeggiator. got some more depth on this on the ukulele. That's me just playing the little keyboard on the NTS-1. But you can see the NTS-1 does have some really good sound and effects to it that you can edit directly and in real time with these sliders. Pretty cool. And if you do want to see a more complete video about the NTS-1 and all its capabilities and I, where I dive into 
all the different oscillators and the effects and the filters and so on, I did a complete NTS-1 review and I put a link to it up here and you can have a look at that one. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, please leave them in the comments section below. And if you like this video, click like and subscribe to the channel if you so desire. Thanks for watching.